Neon is now generally available, and as part of this launch, we shipped a bunch of new features. Here's a quick overview. You can restore your Postgres database that's hosted on Neon in a second, regardless of its size. And we recently published a video about this, and in a nutshell, the way this works is that Neon keeps track of all changes that are happening to your database in a moving time window. And if, let's say, an accidental you know, deletion or modification of your data happens at this point, well, you can restore your data instantly to any other point in time as long as it falls within this moving time window. Now, one challenge that you might face is that you might not be sure at which exact point in time the you know, issue happened. Well, that's why we have two features that will make this easier. Time Travel Assist and Schema Diff, which just launched. Time Travel Assist allows you to query your data in a previous point in time. You can use it as a way to pinpoint when the data that's inside your database has changed. For example, I had a table that I accidentally dropped and I'd like to restore my database. So all I need to do is select a branch and select a point in time. So for me, I'll choose this one because I know that around this time, my data was still available. Now, instead of clicking proceed and just restoring my database, I can verify the selected point in time before restoring. So here we have a SQL editor and you can see that the branch main is selected and this is the timestamp that we'll use to run our query. So now I can just query a timestamp and I should see data that's coming from my table and this is expected. Now, let's say for example that I actually change the time to a few minutes later and I try to query a timestamp again, you'll see that relation users does not exist. So this is expected, and now I verified that I chose the correct point in time. Now, for schema diff, it's actually pretty similar, but the difference is you can compare branches schema with a previous point in time. So this will help you figure out at which point your schema has changed. So when you click schema diff, you will then be able to compare at you know, a specific timestamp. So right now you see that the schemas are in sync. So there are no schema differences between the current state of the database schema that's on the main branch and the past state that's on the timestamp that I selected. But for example, if let's say I choose a few minutes earlier and I click compare, we'll see that this is the difference where I'm actually creating the user's table, which is awesome. Now, the ability to query your database in a previous point in time, as well as schema diff, will actually be coming to the SQL editor very soon, so stay tuned. When you configure IPLL for your project, database access across all branches will be limited to the specified range of IP addresses. You can modify this behavior so that the development branches have unrestricted database access, while branches that you mark as protected will only allow connections from the specified range of IP addresses. All you need to do is check Restrict IP Access to Protected Branches Only and click Save Changes. And then you can go to the Branches page and let's say I want to make my main branch protected. So all I need to do is click on the menu and choose Set as Protected. And then I'll confirm my choice and that's it. Now, if I try to connect to the database that resides in the main branch from an IP that isn't configured, I'll get an error. Protected branches, which are on the scale plan, make it easier for you to have fine-grained control over the security of your database. And in the future, we plan on adding support for more protection rules, so stay tuned. There's now a dedicated monitoring page that you can use to view different metrics about your database. You can filter by different branches and time periods, and you'll be able to view metrics such as RAM and CPU usage, buffer cache hit rate, number of connections and deadlocks, your database size, and the number of updated, deleted, and inserted rows. Let us know down below or in the Neon Discord if there are any other metrics you'd like us to display on this page. You might have noticed that in the breadcrumb navigation under the account selector, there's an organization section and a create organization button. Well, you'll be able to set up an organization where you invite team members and easily collaborate on your Neon projects. This feature will be available very soon, but for now it's in private preview. 
I'll leave more details down below on how you can request access. We're adding support for larger databases on Neon. If you need more than 200 gigabytes worth of storage, you can go in your project settings, go to the beta page, and then go to the large database support section. Here, you'll see that we are enabling large database support for databases between 200 gigabytes and two terabytes. And all you need to do is click request, choose a project, the data size that you need, and also provide more details about your use case. And that's it. This was a recap of everything we shipped. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to comment down below or reach out to us in the Neon Discord. We'd love to hear from you. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.